Hi everyone, in this video we're going to run a CFD or computational fluid dynamics analysis of the internal flow through a pipe network. Um, the goal is to calculate the pressure drop, because pressure drop represents energy loss in your industrial system for example, and we're also going to analyze how much flow is going through each exit option of the pipe network. Now to do so, we're going to use this very simplified 3D model, which was actually made by Hawkridge System. And we chose to use this model because, uh, first of all, they made it public and we can get to really compare the setup of a simulation in SolidWorks, flow simulation. Um, they also did this in Simulia and now we're going to do this in Airshaper, uh, just to have a different reference on how these things work on different platforms. The other platforms are really aimed at engineers, where you need to know all of the settings um, at Airshaper, it's all automated. So so we loaded this model into Airshaper. We're going to select water for this simulation and use the same settings uh, as we saw on the other simulations. And to set up the internal flow simulation, we just click the internal flow simulation button and we click a lid. Um, and then you can see that we can actually provide an arrow here. Uh, we can choose which side of this lid we want to use. We want to use the inside and we're going to use a velocity of just three meters per second. Uh, we're going to do exactly the same on the other side here um, where we actually want to have a pressure opening. So the goal with simulations is that you don't provide the same velocity at the inlet and outlet because then you can actually have uh, a numerical difference between inlet and outlet and you get the continuity problem. So typically you would provide a pressure opening together with a velocity inlet or outlet in your system. So in this case we just want to provide two pressure openings at the end of the system. This is our inlet and we want to see how much flow goes to this one, which has a 90 degree bend, and how much flow goes to this exit uh, channel. What we also want to do for internal flow simulations is to add layers. So layers will add extra precision on the surface. So if you have a flow through this channel, you'll have a high flow velocity in the middle and at the edges or at the wall, the flow, the water will stick to, to, to the side. Um, even if it's a perfectly smooth pipe, you still have what is called oh, sorry, uh, a no-slip condition, which means that uh, the velocity on the wall is zero. Uh, so in between the wall and the middle, you have a velocity gradient. And to capture this properly, we want to add some extra uh, small cells, which are called prism layers, which are very thin cells close to the wall. So with the simulation set up, I select units, uh, just one uh, meter, um, I go to the next page. For this demonstration, I just want to use the regular simulation, which has 10 million cells, including adaptive mesh refinement, which will refine the mesh locally and so on. It'll all run on the high performance infrastructure of Google with more than 100 virtual CPUs, so it's done in just uh, under an hour, actually. And once it's done, you get a number of visualizations. So the first thing we want to analyze with this setup is where are we losing energy? Where are we generating a pressure drop? So if you look at this system, these red clouds, um, it's an arbitrary threshold, but this is a threshold for a isosurface for the total pressure coefficient of zero. So in normal terms, what does this mean? This indicates in 3D where you are losing energy. Um, for example, we can see that in this bend here, for example, the flow wants to just continue on a straight trajectory. So it will actually be pushed against the outside of this bend, which means the inside sometimes features flow separation. So you can have a local recirculation of the airflow as it detaches from the surface and then reattaches re again. The same for this corner. Again, the flow wants to actually uh, jump at the larger radius compared to the one that is actually available in this pipe and you get some flow separation and energy loss there. Um, this one is quite interesting because over here what we see is that this 90 degree bend, it's a very simple pipe network. So what you see here is that the junction between this pipe and this pipe is just the same as having two cylinders intersect. So you get this very sharp edge, um, 3D curved edge between uh, the two pipes, which means that the flow coming through the main pipe wants to continue on a straight trajectory. So the part of the flow that actually wants to go inside this uh, 90 degree uh, side branch of the network needs to curve around this sharp edge and this edge is way too sharp, so there's, there's no possible way that the flow can actually make this sharp corner here. So it'll take a longer route, route like this and uh, hit the side flank here and you'll get a lot of separated airflow or water flow in this case uh, and a bubble of energy loss. And this 
represents a big pressure resistance for all of the water that wants to go this way, which means, as we'll see later on, that you actually um, emphasize the flow going this way, and this one is actually penalized, uh, it will not get a lot of flow. Uh, so if you want equal flow distribution, then this is definitely something you should replace with like a Y junction or something or something. Um, then what we see is that we still have a lot of energy loss and turbulence uh, traveling downstream here. So it really takes a long time for this to, to settle again and, and to, to be nicely laminar flow again. Um, and here, even the main pipe, we see that we have this uh, local flow separation issue. If you look at the pressure then, so what is happening with a flow like this? Um, you have a high pressure at the beginning, so that's why it's slightly yellowish compared to the uh, greenish, darker greenish here at the outlet. And it's scaled automatically uh, with respect to the maximum pressures that you have in the system and the flow velocity. So this is what we saw before. So the flow actually hits the outer corner of this uh, pipe section, this bend, and the inner corner features a low pressure as the air accelerates around the corner, um, but actually wants to get away from this surface. Uh, the same with this bend, uh, so high pressure on the outside, low pressure on the inside. And here, um, this is also something that we saw. So this is the large radius that the flow is following and it actually hits the side here of this junction and that's why some of the flow is forced this way. You can also see that we have these dark blue rings. This is because there's this very small edge in the 3D model between these different pipe elements and this creates uh, a local um, drop in pressure as the air speeds up around that edge. Um, you can see that this is a low pressure area uh, because the, the flow actually wants to jump away and creates a Kind of not a vacuum, but like a low pressure effect. And on this side, we have the high pressure. The same for this corner. So we have a high pressure here on the outside, low pressure on the inside. And then if you look at the surface friction, this is where we can actually analyze the surface friction on different elements of the pipe. Again, you see these ringed elements uh, because these are edges in the 3D model. Um, but what we see here is that because you get this swirl in the flow, uh, you get very asymmetric pressure patterns. So there's a bit of um, flow separation here happening, which travels all the way downstream. You can see the swirl of the flow creating higher friction on one side. Um, you can actually really see this swirl of the flow. Uh, so as you can imagine, if you have to take two bends, um, the flow actually rotates. In this case, um, we have fully separated water flow on this side of the pipe. Uh, and on this side, we have attached flow because the water actually hits the surface and gets pushed against this side. But you can see that this flow separation actually travels all the way down uh, to most of the rest of the pipe here. Uh, so it's very difficult the flow to reattach. Uh, plus, you do have a lower flow velocity overall um, because the majority of the flow is actually pushed through this part of the pipe network. Um, so if you look at this one, we can see that there's a lot of swirl inside the flow. Uh, so this is interesting. So uh, you get friction on the inside because there is a swirl in the flow which is hitting this part likely. And if you then look at other aspects, we're going to ignore the noise um, because we're looking at water flow simulation, another top priority. But if you look at the openings, so if we click on the main opening, so we specified a three meters per second uh, velocity. So minus some numerical uh, rounding error here. This is the input velocity. And what we see is that while these outlets are at zero uh, Pascal's pressure, um, the inlet um, features a pressure, so a back pressure you could say, or a pressure delta across the system of 1180 Pascal's. So that means that's the pressure a pump would have to provide to actually push the flow at three meters per second through this pipe network. So if you want the higher velocity, uh, this would go up even further uh, and so on. So that's really one of the key parameters that you're looking for if you're running a CFD simulation on a pipe network, the pressure drop across the entire system. And if you were to optimize these elements, a different radius, larger radius perhaps, or, or starting your curve here already, or having one 3D curve between these elements instead of these two 90 degree bends. And if you would optimize this system, this area, um, then you would greatly reduce the pressure drop. This is whatever starts from the inlet. If you want to see where the flow comes from, you just click the outlet and then you can see that the flow going out of this uh, side branch, which is also slightly smaller in diameter, um, gets far uh, less flow and the flow velocity is much lower here. So if you look at the inlet, um, we had a velocity specified, which translates into a um, flow 
uh, flow rate of uh, 0.038 um, cubic meters per second and uh, 0.00468 of that is going into uh, this side branch. So if you divide that, so we have 0.00468 divided by, and then just go to the other one, this one, 0.038. Um, that means only 12% of the flow is going out via this channel, and all the rest of the flow is going via the main branch. Um, so if you're looking to optimize even an HVAC system where you're uh, trying to distribute air across different outlets in a building, for example, um, then this is the way to, to optimize things via CFD simulations. You can play with the diameters, you can play with uh, the curvature, you can play with junctions to favor one section over another section and so on. So that's typically the benefit of running CFD simulations. Um, if you're looking at, uh, let's say, a petrochemical installation or heavy industries and so on, or even at small scale, you'll notice that um, you get quite a lot of forces on these elements because, as you can imagine, if there's a large flow rate of water uh, that needs to be pushed um, into another direction um, by 90 degrees, then you have a lot of reaction forces on these elements. So, in this case, you'll see that along the x-axis, for example, you get quite a big um, reaction force. So, there's a force of um, 113 newtons pushing this way and also 110 which is basically almost the same because the resulting forces re resulting force will be pushing at 45 degrees which means a positive x and along the z-axis a negative z so a force like this acting uh, and causing a reaction force on that system so if you want to design brackets or, or the, the strength of the connection between these elements uh, if you have a flange here and so on then knowing these forces is actually quite uh, critical. Um, you can also go beyond uh, what you see here online. So this is just your first um, indication as to where um, the biggest flow um, aspects are located, uh, the biggest uh, issues that you can solve. If you want, you can also um, open the data in Paraview because all of the data is stored in open form format, which means you can make a slice through this pipe, for example. Um, and if we show this slice, for example, um, you can actually zoom in. Uh, of course, this is where the bend starts. That's why we don't have data there. Uh, you can go in and zoom. You can see how the mesh gets refined automatically as it gets closer to the wall. And we can also see these prism layers that were added uh, as an extra option. So you can really imagine that the uh, velocity profile that you have close to the wall really gets resolved nicely with these uh, prism layers because they're very, very small compared to the diameter of the pipe network. Um, so this shear profile that you have in the velocity uh, can actually be captured nicely uh, using these uh, simulations. So you just need to play around a bit with, with your color scale. So you can select this default one and then if you want you can lower the scale to maybe 0 0.5, uh, let's say to 10 maybe. Uh, to get some more visuals in there. Um, if I lower it to 5, uh, for example, that might be a better option. And if I then turn off the mesh edges again, you can really see the, um, the boundary layer being formed close to the wall and uh, the water flow speeding up as you actually get closer to the center of the pipe flow. And the longer this pipe is, the more the flow will be developed and you'll get this um, curved velocity profile. So that was it for this video on the CFD simulation of the flow through a pipe. Um, of course, this was a very simple example. Um, if you want, you can run this on super complex systems with up to 100, 200 thousands of, of different branches of your pipe. You just need to select the right accuracy. If you like the video, please do hit the like button. If you have any comments, drop them below. If you have suggestions on what we should calculate next, let us know and hope to see you soon for the next video. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye bye.